What is up guys, it's the Mataku bringing you Ruby Volume 3 Episode 6 Theories. Now I came up with a few theories I had to take a closer look at Ruby Volume 3 Episode 6. You know, re-watching it a few times. And it's up to you guys to decide whether or not you guys want to agree with my theories. The, the only thing I hope for is that you guys at least find something interesting in these theories. Now let's get these theories rolling. Now the first theory that I want to talk about is one pertaining to one of the three fairy tales that Pyrrha mentioned before, you know, Aspen asked her about the story of the seasons. Now I know that the fairy tale that is the main focus of this episode is the story of the seasons. However, that does not mean that we should just ignore the other fairy tales that were mentioned. Heck, Crow even tells us later in the episode that all fairy tales, myths, and legends all have some truth behind them. So these three other fairy tales that Pyrrha mentions can possibly be important later on in the Ruby series. For example, the Shallow Sea. Now what do you think this story is about? A shallow sea, right? It's obvious. Now what if in this story, it is said that there is a creature living in the shallow sea that would drag any man, woman, or child that would come even near the water and that they would never be heard from again. Now if the shallow sea were to be a story that pertains to something like that, now what kind of impact do you think this would have on a child? It would probably result in that child growing up to have a fear of water. Now what Ruby character do we know of that is scared of water? That's right people, Yang. Yang has a fear of water and did you know that in episode- Nah, I'm just kidding, it's Neptune! I had you guys going there now, didn't I? I was just trying to keep you guys on your toes, I hope you guys caught that. Now moving on. Neptune is afraid of water, but we still don't know the, the exact reason why he's scared of water. But I believe that it can possibly be linked to the Shallow Sea fairy tale. Whether it has a monster living in the sea or something else tragic happened in the story that would make someone fear water, I don't know, maybe he heard the story as a kid growing up in Bakio and took it to heart. Which now knowing what Crow told us about there being truth behind their myths, legends, and fairy tales, Neptune might just be justified for his fear of water. So that was just me throwing that out there. The main point is that there are other fairy tales that can possibly become major factors in future plot points later on. So keep them in mind. Now my second theory pertains to Pyrrha and what might happen to her and her body if they actually do manage to transfer over Amber's aura to Pyrrha. Now in episode 6 when Pyrrha and Ospin and his gang are in the underground bunker underneath the school called the vault, we are given a lot of information by Crow that the Fall Maiden is a young woman named Amber who was attacked and for the first time in history, part of her power was stolen. And she is currently in a vegetative state, barely being kept alive through state-of-the-art Atlas technology. And Ironwood mentions that there is a possibility that when Amber passes away, her powers may seek its other half. So they want Pyrrha to become the new Fall Maiden before Amber dies. Though if Pyrrha were to accept, there would be a catch to this. They cannot have Pyrrha inherit the Fall Maiden's powers naturally due to Amber's condition. So they will have to use a more scientific method which is to extract Amber's aura and shove it into Pyrrha's body. And we all know that a person's aura is the manifestation of their soul, which Pyrrha herself explained to us back in Ruby Volume 1 Episode 6. So essentially Pyrrha will become an individual with two souls. Does that sound familiar anybody? It should since this was referenced back in Ruby Volume 1 Episode 3 when Blake was reading a book about a man who had two souls each fighting for control over the man's body. So if Pyrrha were to go through the operation, she and Amber may have to get used to sharing the same body. Or Amber's soul might try to very well dominate over Pyrrha's soul, which would lead into the Pyrrha we all know and love to eventually fade away leaving behind either Amber's lone soul or marking the creation of a brand new soul that was the ramification of both Pyrrha and Amber's souls combining into one. Thus creating a new quote unquote Pyrrha that will have a personality that is a mixture of both Pyrrha's and Amber's. Now at the end of Pyrrha's conversation with Ospin, Ospin gives Pyrrha an ultimatum which is that Pyrrha must give them her answer before the vital festival ends. So this brings up a very important question, will Pyrrha say anything about this to her team? I I personally think she will not want to and will try to keep it to herself since Ospin did say that they want to keep this under wraps. However, I believe that if Pyrrha somehow managed to keep this a secret from her team, at least John will realize that something is up with Pyrrha. Whether this happens before or after Pyrrha does the operation, it remains unknown. If it happens before, John will obviously try to talk Pyrrha out of it. Although if this confrontation with John were to happen after the operation, it will make a lot more sense to me because John and Pyrrha's auras have technically been linked together ever since Volume 1 Episode 6, when Pyrrha used her aura to unlock John's aura. And Pyrrha also said some deep words during the whole ordeal. What I got from what she was saying is that she bounded her aura to John's to force his soul to release, which simultaneously forced his aura to awaken. And this bond between them will only be unbound by death. So I strongly believe that John's aura will react in a strange way to Pyrrha if she has two souls or if Amber's soul is trying to invade Pyrrha's. So I think John will definitely feel that something is amiss with Pyrrha 
while everyone else thinks Pyrrha is the same as usual. Now my third theory pertains to Mercury and what I think his semblance is all about. Now let's take a closer look at Yang and Mercury's fight. Now for the most part this battle was executed really well. They did not show Yang just completely dominate Mercury or vice versa for the entire match. Though it can clearly be seen that Mercury was not going all out against Yang based on the conclusion of their fight. Now getting Yang disqualified and forcing the large crowd of spectators at the tournament and viewers throughout the kingdoms to watch this unsettling sight was definitely part of Cinder's plan. Because we saw a variety of different Grims start to get more riled up and grow much more aggressively due to the excessive amounts of negative emotions that were created within the tournament's audience and viewers at the sight of witnessing Yang break Mercury's leg. But this brings up a very important question. Now how exactly did Yang get ensnared in this illusion of Mercury going for a final attack on Yang? I believe this answer lies within Mercury's boots, more specifically the weird smoke blast that Mercury fires from his boots. I believe these smoke blasts are actually a gas known as Mercury Vapor. And Mercury Vapor is just Mercury in a gas state. And if you would know anything about mercury you would know that it is highly poisonous and one of the many possible symptoms that can transpire in a human due to mercury poisoning is hallucination so this can easily explain why Coco saw Yatsuhashi behind her when he was obviously not there and why Yang now is also experiencing a similar situation so to wrap things up I believe that these smoke blasts are actually mercury vapor and are actually part of Mercury's semblance since he did appear to be able to control them and their trajectories at will. He may also have some command to a certain extent as to what kind of hallucination his opponent will have. And as we can clearly see, if this turns out to be true, this is a very OP semblance. Now ever since episode 6 came out, a lot of people have been having theories of what's Yang gonna do now. I've been hearing a lot of theories about Yang joining up with Cinder because of this and, and going into the dark side, you know. <sighs> Going on some Dark Vader stuff, you know? But to be honest, I don't really see that happening with Yang. I'm pretty sure Team Ruby's gonna figure out a way to help Yang. But if Yang is gonna join anybody, it's gonna be Raven, alright? Now, we don't know what Team Raven's working for, but... If, like I said, if Yang's gonna join anybody, it's gonna be Raven. On a quick side note, when we found out about the four season maidens, I was just thinking to myself that I really hope that the four seasonal maidens don't end up being consisted of all Team Ruby members. So yeah, this has been the Mount Talk. This has been a few of my Ruby Volume 3 Episode 6 theories. I hope you guys enjoyed them. You know, comment down below if you guys have any weird theories of your own. Or, you know, what you guys thought of my theories. You know, don't be shy. I don't bite. Or do I? But no, on a serious note, I don't bite. So come on, you know, just feel free to comment down below what you guys want. So yeah, rate the video. Feel free to subscribe to this channel if you guys are new. I really appreciate it. Catch you guys later, and stay gold.